So Kamal, do you want to talk about kind of some of these novel uh, ADCs, uh, these novel antibody drug conjugates for HER2? Yeah, sure. I think this has been a very exciting time for antibody drug conjugates for sure. And surely we all have the experience and a lot of clinical data, including overall survival, with our first prototype antibody drug conjugate in the HER2 positive uh, subtype, which is adotrastuzumab M10 seen or TDM1. But we now are looking at other next generation antibody drug conjugates. Uh, one among them that uh, you know certainly caught my attention was the Daiichi compound, the DS8201A, or trastuzumab derexitcam, uh, as they call we'll it. We'll never pronounce that. I know. Tras I'm, I'm still I think that's what we're going to call it. Tras-D. I am so working on that one. Not TDM1, one. like Tras-D. Very impressive. Certainly working on that one. I just coined it. So you're that? Tras-D. Yeah, okay, we, we had the IBS and right. the MABS to right. worry about, and now okay. we also have the TCANs to worry right. about. Okay. But, you, you know, unlike what we have in an antibody drug conjugate, in <laughs> TDM1, our payload, our drug conjugate, is a metansin derivative. This one is a topo-1 inhibitor uh, derivative, and it's, again, the trastuzumab antibody with a uh, protease cleaved linker to this um, payload, which is topo-1 inhibitor. But what was very impressive was that there were two cohorts uh, that were presented. One was the HER2 positive cohort that was pre-treated uh, and heavily pre-treated, including patients with pertuzumab and TDM1, and then there was a HER2 low expressing cohort. And in both of these, there was activity seen, 61% overall response rates in the HER2 positive cohort, and about 30% in the HER2 lows. So this includes ER positive, HER2 negative, and triple negative patients. So I thought that was Nice to well, see that data. I thought that topo inhibitors had some response in breast. You know, it's always been kind of oh, sneaking do. around they in do. the doc, in the, you know, it's always been like in the abstracts and meetings that. that have been percolating yeah. for There's years. A paper I have used that. Right. Right. Anyway, I agree. I, I think we agree and we use that. But I think what was um, novel about here is that in TDM1, the drug to antibody ratio is about 3.5 is to 1. This is 8 is to 1. So it was. Right. So it's bigger, better delivery. Correct. And so there was not increased toxicity. Duration of response was really, really impressive with some patients as long as one and a half years into the study. And this uh, drug actually has a breakthrough designation with the FDA. So I think it's impressive, a compound, and great data. And right. a randomized trial. There's a randomized against physician's Opening choice. This year. Right. I think that Destiny, I think it's called. Is it called Destiny? I think so. And TDM1 did not seem to work in uh, low HER2. Right. Probably expression. because of the payload. I think, it's a, I think that's a really good point that Kamal's brought up. It's a payload issue. That you know that if you're only three to one as opposed to eight to one, that's a very good point. I think also personally, I think topo are probably better than M10 seen as a chemo in general. And it's probably still get hit reaching the target because we have low levels of HER2 on right. breast cancer cells. Right, so. right. right. It may Absolutely. Be. I mean, we don't know. I think for these sure. are all TDM1 resistant patients, so I think this is really which is even more fascinating. I can't wait to see that randomized trial. We're going to participate. I don't know if you guys are, but oh, yeah. I think it's a great yeah. trial.